Welcome back. It's season four of Serious and Silly with Scott and Sheila. Um, Sheila's off this week, but we have a fantastic guest. Uh, he's an actor, voice artist, producer. He is also the host of such wonderful shows as Wall of Chefs. Uh, we know him from Carnival Eats, which I shared with him. I watched eight episodes last week, uh, last night before our show. I do my homework. His new show, Wall of Bakers, premieres March 28th. We're so excited to have him. He's just he's just one of those guys where you want to you feel like you want to have a drink with him and that you already know him. Noah Cap. Welcome to Blue. I didn't know. Hold on. And oh, there he is. Introduction. He, he is here. Uh, Noah, so excited. You know, I am not joking when I say I watched eight episodes of uh, Carnival Eats, and then uh, just like. Around midnight, I ate like my weight in granola, chocolate granola bars, because that was the best I could do. That is literally the formula to the show. You uh, you pass, you move to the next level. Uh, also, I knew I got an email last night. It was like somebody watched eight episodes. <laughs> my, my mom, but it wasn't yeah. like you. It was me. It was me. So I basically want, I want to do a quick screen share just in case anyone hasn't seen the show. Which at this point, I don't know how you haven't. Does this capture, this was one of the episodes I watched last night, does this kind of capture Carnival Eats in one photo? Can I tell you something that's so amazing? Not only does that photo capture Carnival Eats, but I, th th and this is so weird that this moment's happening. I remember a story about this exact moment, which I think the story even represents Carnival Eats more than the photo. That corn dog sitting on top of that, like, building brick of french fries where they've used <laughs> ketchup as mortar uh that that corn dog is actually 18 inches long and right behind me the 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 gentleman who, who was making it with us on the show i remember i turned to him and i said to him at one point you know jim or i forget his name and i was like uh why 18 inches long for the corn dog and he said because that's how deep the fryer is <laughs> and I was like, there it is. You know what I mean? Like that's, it's like, we're going to push it to the maximum limit. If exactly. that thing was 18 and a half inches deep, you'd have an 18 and a half inch corn dog. But uh, it's, that's the world we're working in. And it's magical. That's words of wisdom from Jim. I feel why it captures is because you have the food that's been deep fried. You have Noah who's always animated. And then you have some guy in the background or some girl in the background that seems a little bit confused by you often. Yes. <laughs> I, which is super common. I've had that effect on people long before <laughs> Carnival Eats. Uh, just now the camera's there to capture those reactions. So uh, give me a little bit of like how this works. So you contact the Carnival and say, hey, this Canadian guy is going to come down. He's going to eat some of your deep fried stuff. I don't know if they make a point of saying I'm Canadian, but uh, okay. uh, uh, shout out to the research team and the entire office at Carnival Elites. I mean, uh, I, you know, it's funny. It's one of those things where I, I get two or three questions on social media more than anything. It's like, what's the worst food you ever ate? Uh, you know, what's the best food you ever ate? Why aren't you 400 pounds? Yeah, yeah. And, I would like to know that. You know, is there something you ate and didn't like? There's no way you like everything. And I always say to people, by the time I get there, the office has found the fairs. They've researched all the vendors. They've gone through the menus. They've picked the foods. They've like, you know, they've, they've run through everything to make sure that it's the right thing. So when I get there, I'm eating something that's been like handpicked and figured out, you know what I mean? I'm not just walking around the fairgrounds randomly <laughs> going into booths and uh, hoping somebody will sign a piece of paper and, yeah. uh, you know, give us access to their entire recipe book. That Have being camera, said, we'll film. What's that? Have camera, we'll film. Come on. That's right. Show us here. That's right. It's uh, So uh, the research team really does an amazing job and that's a, uh, a huge part of, uh, I think, the success we've had is is just the digging and finding these foods. It's like, we'll go to fairs sometimes or, or little events and people come up and be just like, why are you here? Like, we never <laughs> thought you'd come to this one. And it's like, why not this one? I think those little fairs for a lot of people, the, the state fairs are fun to watch, but I think it's those small kind of community-driven uh, events that I think a lot of people around the world can kind of associate 
uh, and connect with because those are the fairs that they grew up with. Uh, not everybody makes the drive to the big state fair. So those smaller ones have actually uh, brought uh, some of our wildest foods, I think. One of the things I love about the show, like we're talking about, Jim, is it seems like everyone, and it's something we preach to our students, it seems like they all just have a passion for fairs. Like, it's, it's insane that all of yeah. them just love what they're doing. There is a, there's a famous line from Godfather or whatever, something that every time you know you think you're out, they pull you back in. Uh, we, I mean, I say that on the show 50 times a season. The amount of vendors that I've stood beside, I mean, Scott, uh, you're, you're uh, working at Champlain College, uh, one of the country's top uh, <laughs> educational facilities. I know that the math department there is just gangbusters. Uh, nine seasons times uh, seven foods an episode times 13 episodes. How many foods is that? It's a lot of foods. I'm not that, in the math department. That is the correct answer. It's a yeah. lot of foods. And in a lot of foods, uh, you're going to get a little bit of everything. But what is consistent is the story from the vendors. And that is so often, I grew up in this industry. I went and pursued a different job or something, whatever. And I quit and came back. Uh, there's either the people who ride the ride for life or leave, but 98% of them uh, come back. And I and the question obviously is why? And it's the love of outdoors, of being on the move, of meeting people, the excitement of the fairgrounds. Um, it's a hard job. You know, I, 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 I say to the vendors all the time, I don't think anybody at home understands how much work goes in behind the scenes to running these booths. Uh, I was guilty of it too. I thought that everybody showed up 30 minutes before the doors open, flick the light switch on, you know, get everything turned on and ready to go. But it is, uh, they're there till two, three in the morning and they're back at five, 6 a.m. to start getting ready again. Uh, unbelievable work ethic. No, yeah, the, pa the passion is crazy, but it's, it's what makes the show so great because, you know, originally, I had a great idea, and I'm going to run it by you now. And maybe it's not too late. It's season nine, but we got time. I think we can still do another eight or nine seasons. Good so leave. instead of Carnival Eats, deep fried shit. I don't know if we can say shit on this show. but I think we can put an asterisk over the eye. <laughs> uh... Basically, it's whatever they can throw in the deep fryer 90% of the time, correct? I mean... If you can come up with something we haven't deep fried yet, um, <laughs> you know, I'll give you a bowl of soup. Okay. We did soup, deep fried soup, Scott. I mean, what's, you know what I mean? What, what's left? Yeah, well, as I was telling you before, I saw deep fried bubble gum and I was just like, okay, maybe we're getting to the end, but then you'll watch the next episode and you'll be like, no, we, we still got room. We still got we room. We haven't brought that bubble gum and bacon yet. <sighs> yes. Can you can you share with me what you what you said about the uh, bacon? Everything's better with bacon. Everything's better with bacon. That would be another tagline for your show. Not tell you how to run things. every time. You know, <laughs> I'd have ten dollars. You're, you're doing well. I'm not telling you how to run things. Just consider either deep fried ass or everything is better with bacon. It may be like a YouTube kind of channel, or maybe yeah. like a you know after hours. So not to get into the questions that everyone asked you, but I really do ask, have to ask you, like, how are you not 400 pounds? Stress. Stress. <laughs> Stress and uh, corsets. Okay. The medieval technology just, uh, it crushes your organs, but you look great on camera. And that's got just something you got to make the tough decision sometimes. So uh, literally, some of the things you eat are two to 3,000 calories alone. Uh, you know, I listen, I think the, the, the truth is this. Uh, the real answer often upsets people because I think everybody's waiting to hear me go like, I'm out there working out and I lead a healthy lifestyle and all that stuff. It's about balance. So when I go like, I think it's genetics, they just get angry. <laughs> uh, so I'm going to say uh, I'm in such wonderful shape because of my physical regimen. I am a machine. I work out uh, while working out. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's just, look at this. So I'm imagining like how your day goes is you eat like a corn dog, bust out 50 push-ups, 
maybe, you know, go back for, a, you know, uh, something else deep fried, you know. Do well, I've got a little piece. one now. So uh, it's all about kind of, you know, trying to trying to make the most of your free time. So it's just sit ups into a corn dog. You know what I mean? Push ups into a Sunday. <laughs> uh, it's the best of both worlds. I have to ask you about this because besides watching eight episodes of Carnival Eats, the other thing I watched uh, this week is The Bachelor. Love The Bachelor. I am a Bachelor fanatic. Little known fact about Noah, the host of Bachelor and Bachelorette Canada. How did this come about and how do I get to be a part of it? Uh, it's funny. I think the story that everybody loves to tell is that I got the job through a tweet. Um, that seems to be the, the kind of the consensus in the industry that I that I got through a tweet. I like to believe that I got it through uh, professionalism, talent, and hard work. Uh, <laughs> but the truth of the matter is the audition came through a tweet. Um, I was a huge fan of the Bachelor and Bachelorette franchise. I was watching all of the seasons. When I heard it was coming to Canada again, I literally saw a tweet and responded, do you need a host? Uh, and I think they were familiar with what I was doing. They reached out and said, would you be willing to put something on camera? And I went for it. I mean, <laughs> as a note to like your students or whatever, it was like, I've got an opportunity here. Uh, I'm going to do this right. My brother owns a video production company. I got in a suit. We lit a hundred candles around the house. We built little sets and every little scene that they gave me to do to camera, I did it like the show. I walked in in the suit. I explained the week's dates. I mean, I really tried to like build the environment and uh, it led to an in-person audition. And once you get me in a room, Scott, oh, it's game over at that okay. point. Everybody okay. knew I was gonna get it. And uh, I did. And it was a fun couple of seasons. The show has gone in a different direction. And I'm, I think there's a part of me that's happy to be moving in a new direction because I don't know, the last couple of years, I think have been a learning and growing experience for a lot of us about uh, ourselves, about people, about our relationships with people, about how we treat each other. Uh, and I started to struggle uh, watching the newer seasons. It just felt <laughs> like the producer's hands were kind of, you know, uh, more prevalent than ever. So I, I, I kind of hit the eject button, but uh, I really look back with nothing. Uh, but good memories, because the truth is, Scott, I was there for the right reasons. I love it. I love it. I, I wish we could end on that note, but we can't. I'm not ready to say bye yet. No, it's, it's not the final rose of the evening. We can't, no. uh, we can't yeah. say our goodbyes yet. So what you're saying is if I send out a tweet and I'm like, hey, at Bachelor Canada, let's bring it back, at Noah Cap, at Scott O'Brien, sidekick, Noah Cap, host, Scott O'Brien, sidekick. Bachelor Canada, let's bring it. I, I mean, I would, you wouldn't know that I saw it. So I wouldn't like it or respond to it. And you would just, <laughs> think, I guess you never saw it. <laughs> okay. Well, we can talk about that later. I mean, you look like a more distinguished <laughs> version of me anyways. Maybe it's time for you to jump in and take the reins. I mean, I don't know. I don't know if I can. I, I, I saw you on the show and your delivery of, you know, uh, I don't even remember what the guy's name was. Oh, stop, Stan, stop, stop. ladies. This move right here, okay? Host hands. Boom, boom, boom. Those are, those are your three, right? Okay, that's it. Host hands, just like that. Slow, say it with uh, the most dramatic kind of intent you can come up with. Also, let's just stop beating around the bush. Uh, Maury Povich, are the results in? Are we related? <laughs> I mean, we're deep enough into the interview now that people are like, why is Noah doing this interview? Does Scott's his stepbrother? Yeah, I know. Yeah, it's crazy. Like I keep trying to tell our students that, like you know, we're we're both super popular people. Uh, you know, it's not a competition. Uh, we're just a couple of gorgeous guys. We, we, you know, often in the summertime, we'll we'll hang out at the carnivals, <laughs> eating stuff. You know, it's, it's true. Well, it's we true have free time. time. Not not every summer, but. You know, our super busy schedules, but uh, last summer, uh, where did we go? The Cape? Did we oh, go to the Cape man. last where, summer? Where didn't we go? Uh, but I will wrap that up by saying I wish Clayton the most success, and I hope that he finds love on his journey. 
Now, your, your uh, super helpful and wonderful agent, Karen, is listening in. So I think we have to move on from this. And we have to talk about your new show, Wall of Bakers, premiering March 28th. Uh, love Wall of Chefs. Tell us a little bit about Wall of Bakers. I mean, I, I always look at these shows as a, as a viewer. Because the truth is, like, even at this point, I still feel like I'm a person like everyone else on the sofa watching Food Network as opposed to being a personality on it. So I remember getting the breakdown on Wall of Chefs and the whole kind of explanation of what the show was. And I, it was like instant. I was just like, I would watch the out of this show. <laughs> uh, I mean, it's just like one of those, the second I heard the breakdown, the concept, it, the beginning of every episode, I say the line to the camera. I say that moment about everybody at home has a moment at some point where they wonder, what would my food, you know, taste like in the hands of a professional? What would they think of my work? Uh, that's a moment that we all think about, that we experience, that we feel. Uh, so getting to see that unfold in real life is awesome. But I think the show has had so much success because of the layers that nobody saw coming. It's the conversations with the chefs amongst themselves where they're talking about tips and tricks and, and exchanging information. It's the moments where a home cook teaches one of our chefs on the wall a new technique or they're sitting up there going, you can't make a pasta that way or you can't do polenta with popcorn in a food processor. <laughs> but then get to that plate and eat it and have a moment of saying, I learned something new today. Uh, nobody thought about those moments happening. So I think to be the conduit, to be the person who kind of like, you know, balances both sides and gets to spend a little bit of time tipping my toes in each uh, pond, uh, I'm spoiled rotten because I've got a front row seat for what you know is uh, the greatest show on earth. Yeah, and you know, you get to also eat deep fried stuff for a living. It's a, it's a magical life you're living. So just but quickly, all the bakers, man. Are you a baker? Or do you bake at all? I'm not a baker, no. But so that's why I like watching these shows. I love right. watching them because I appreciate the talent level that goes into being able to bake stuff. Well, you're gonna love Wall of Bakers. It uh I, I was I was saying, you know, like I, I came home at the end of the first day of shooting. And my beautiful wife, Carrie, said to me, how was it? How did it go? And I said, I, I went to the first station for my first visit in the first round with our home cook. And we had just finished shooting, you know, 20 plus episodes of Wall of Chefs and all the scallops and the, the you know, the sous vide, this. And, and I went up to that first station. I said, what are you making? She was like, I'm going to be doing a coconut mango ice cream on a triple chocolate brownie. And it was just <laughs> like, yeah, <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean? Veggies, get out of here. Yeah. So you brought up your, your wonderful wife, Carrie. You guys have been together almost since birth, which is a wonderful story. If you want to take two seconds and also tell us about your cooking. Like, did you make her a nice little Valentine's meal? Uh, well, Valentine's uh, is obviously about showing love. So I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't cook for her. I wouldn't, I wouldn't put her <laughs> through that. Um, I know my strengths. I'm an eater. Uh, we have been together for almost 21 years uh, we met on a bus. Our mothers were both pregnant and their stomachs touched. And they still to this day say that they both felt something happen. Uh, no, that's not what happened. <laughs> I'm just getting word. We actually met on a trip when we were like in our early twenties, uh, on the other side of the world. And it turned out she lived 40 minutes away from me in Toronto. And I had to go to the other side of the planet to find her. And I've spent the last 21 years making sure that uh, I don't lose her. Amazing. So I have one more thing. And, you know, I like to pander to uh, our crowd. And nothing is better than when you're trying to get ratings just to show a picture of a beautiful baby. So this is a new addition to the family, Wolfie. Wolfie. Oh, man. She is just uh, a ray of sunshine. This kid is like, uh, there is something... There's something with this kid. She just has an effect on people. She's so positive. She just emits this like, this smile and this like, I'm not being cheesy, Scott. And I know every parent's whatever, but um, I never had a, 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 the intention to, to, to share my experience being a first time parent with her as much as I 
have on social media. The truth is I do it because I feel like everybody's fallen in love with her the same way we have. And there's so many nice comments every day about life is hard, but man, these little moments of getting to see her or whatever it is just brings a smile to my face. And uh, she's changed our lives. Uh, we, she, you know, uh, we, we adopted Wolfie. It was like almost seven years with, with COVID and everything, the process, it was an unbelievably like difficult, long, uh, testing journey and process. But like everything, when you, when you have something so magical at the end, there's that feeling of, we, we kind of went through all of that for this. Um, she's just, she's, She's un she's unbelievable. She's, she's adorable. Yeah, I she can is. say it. She's she's adorable, and is, and I'm not even taking offense to it that she's getting like three, four times the likes that I get. Yeah. It's like I put a picture of me up on my Instagram now, and everybody's like, "Boo!" and tomatoes <laughs> start hitting the wall. Like, How did you get to the front of the house? I just posted the photo. Yeah, uh, people hate me now. Do not give Wolfie her own Instagram. It'll only eat away at your ego. Not, yeah, not, are you kidding? I'm going to ride the coattails. <laughs> so before we wrap up, Noah, just remember, uh, all the bakers, March 28th, how can people follow you? You're awesome. Oh, thanks, Scott. Uh, I mean, I, the, the, just the way I am is the way that, I'm, uh, that I am. Uh, at Noah Cap, N-O-A-H-C-A-P-P, like P -P, my pants, E. <laughs> Uh, and I always say, I don't riddle my accounts with advertisements and things or whatever. It's me, it's Carrie, it's our life, it's adventures and food. And I try to share behind the scenes of Carnival Eats and the shows that I work on so people can get a glimpse into all the fun stuff that they don't get to see. Uh, but yeah, Wall of Baker's dropping uh, at the end of March. Super excited. I can't wait for people to see it. I'm a little biased, but it's really good. Wolfie's fired up. You can hear her <laughs> already. I've got a deep fried bottle of formula standing by. It's going to be a great night. It's going to be amazing. And uh, I'm a little disappointed there was no pictures of me and you at the Cape, uh, but I understand why. It's, we, we would like to keep it low key. Yeah. I mean, I, I didn't even think we were going to talk about our beautiful friendship. So I was a bit caught off guard. All right. Thanks, Noah, for doing this. I know you're super busy and it's, I really appreciate it. It's my pleasure, Scott. I appreciate the support, man. That was super nice. All right. Thanks, man. Yeah. All the best, brother.